let's go over one more function here. So we're going to be using random numbers. So don't forget to include the C time library. And um, we also need to include srand time null. That allows us to use uh, random numbers. Okay. So let's, let's go over, before we go into the functions here, let's go over what we know about random numbers here. Now recall this function here. This is just the prime function here, the prime number function here. I'm just going to leave it here, and I can call it whenever I want here since that's going to be another tool that I have in my toolbox. I can just call the prime function if I want to know if a number is prime or not. Okay. So just looking at a random number here, From random mod 5, we already know that it's going to output a random number from 0 to 4. That's if I use the console output command. Okay. From 0 to 4, it'll always be a random number from 0 to 4, and each one of those numbers will have an even chance of being picked. <clears throat> and you can always run a test, too. We can, we can make... Um, we can uh, make some statistics here to see how many times it's been picked. If we want to run this through, you can write your own code that'll run this through, you know, a million times or whatever, to see how many times each one is being picked. And they should each be picked about the same amount of time, so there should be a 20% chance for each number in this case here. But that's what we know from 0 to 5 here. But what if I don't want to output a number from 0 to 4? What if I want to output a random number from 1 to 5 here? I can just add 1 here, right? Now, because this is going to add 1 to whatever the random number is here. So this piece here will still add a random number from 0 to 4 here. Then after that, this will output... It'll just add 1 to this here. So it'll output a random number plus 1. So this, in this case, will be 1 to 5. I can also go from 2 to 6 if I want to. So this right here would add a random number from 2 to 6. Alright. Well, this right here, say we have 9. from 9 to 4. You know, because this will be the minimum, or from 9 to uh, 14. This right here will always be the minimum, this right here, and this, the way we're doing this here, this will always be the minimum value here. So I want to write a function that outputs a random number from our certain range here. So let's make, say I make an int here. Say I have an int min, and I have an int max here. Just clarify this, when we put variables in these parameters here, when we declare functions here, you always have to have a type with it. So even though we have a comma here, we can't just put max. It'll be confused. So we have to put the type with it and, and, and um, put in int min and int max, because I, I want my function to take two parameters here, because I want to give it a minimum and maximum value here. Okay, all I wanted to do is just return a random number from a minimum range to a maximum range here. In this case, my minimum range is going to be 9. So, I want to return something. Well, how would I do this? I can say a random number here. Mod, um, now what's the size here? This size is going to be from 0 to 4, right? Well, if our max is 14 here, our max is going to be 14. We have to know what our max is, plus our min here. So we can say our, the size of this here, in this case it's going to be 5, which is going to be 9, 10, 11, 12, and 9, 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's actually going to go from 9 to 13. I'm sorry, I messed that up. We have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We can take our max here and subtract it from the minimum value here. And then in this case, that size would be 0 here if, if our max and minimum was the same, so we can add 1 to it. And then we can add the min here. And that's it for our, for our random numbers here. So let, let's uh, try and run this here. Let's, see, let's try testing this here to make sure it works. And you should always test all your, when you write a function here, 
you should always test it with several different cases here. Like I should try putting in one, see what happens. It should be false. I should try putting in every other number here to make sure they're prime. Same thing here. First, I want to try a random number from 1 to 1. So in this case, 1 minus 1 is 0, plus 1 is 1 here. I w this thing here cannot be 0. Or their compiler is going to have a major problem. And uh, it doesn't know what the cin.get thing is. Well, because I don't have a, uh, a brace here. So in this case, our minimum is always going to be 1 here. Because right here, random mod 1 here, because this is 0 here. This whole entire thing here evaluates the 1. Rand mod 1 is always going to be 0, right? Well, our minimum is 1 here, so we're going to take 0 plus 1. In this particular case, this will always output 1 here. So, just to test this here, I always want to make sure that this piece here cannot be 0, because we already seen that when, um, when, we use rand when this piece here evaluates to 0 or less, it's going to have a major fit. The computer will start running into all kinds of problems here because the compiler won't stop it. The compiler won't tell you there's a compiler error. It'll just let it run and it'll cause all kinds of problems here. Let's say I want to go from um, let's say I want to go from seven to nine. Let's say just seven to eight here. Well, let's check here. Eight goes in here minus seven here, which is going to be one here. So eight minus seven is one plus one is two. And then we're always going to add the minimum value to it, which is 7. So random mod 2. So in this case, it's 7, 8. 8, 8, and then uh, hopefully it's 7 this time, 8. There's going to be a 50-50 chance that it's uh, going to be um, 7 or 8. So this is just a new algorithm here. And um, it'll just output a random number based on here. It'll always either be it'll always be between seven and eight, or it'll it'll be equal seven. It'll always be between or equal to these numbers here. So if I want to go from seven to nine, this is a random number from seven to nine here. So I'd rather use this here instead of using this rand thing. So now, if I want to put this into a while loop here, while, let's say n is less than 100 here, and i got to declare n, and now let me just use a for loop, for int a is equal to 0, a is less than 100, a++, plus plus. I want to output a random number, maybe from 1 to 100 here. So it'll always be between 1 and 100 here, so it'll always be included into the set. And uh, this is case sensitive, you have to make sure your name matches the name of your function. So we run this here, and nothing's going to happen because I forgot to output these to the screen. Okay, so these are just random numbers from 1 to 100 here. And notice that 100, 100 was uh, included in there somewhere. Here's 100 right here. Notice that there shouldn't be any zeros. There are no zeros. I don't see any. Let's try it again. Maybe we should go uh, 300 times and check to make sure there's no zeros. And there won't be. We, you can. Another thing is when you test this here, when we test these here, we can never be for certain that this will this will always work. So we can never be a hundred percent sure when we test this here. So we have to come up with when you write your own little functions here. You have to come up with like a thousand different test cases to make sure it's not going to crash your computer. When you when you when you trust it.
So when you trust it enough, because I'm pretty confident that this will work here, but I can never be for certain. Just as um, I'm pretty confident that this will always output prime numbers here, but I can never be certain. So now what I want to do here, we have two functions here. In the next video, I want to I want to go over one more function video, and uh, we're going to uh, apply these two together here.